Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up and telling you about all the books that I've read in the month of May. So for me, May was the 1900 to 1950 readathon that I was hosting throughout the month, all about reading books from around the world, published between 1900 and 1950. I really enjoyed doing the readathon, um, and I really enjoyed hosting it and reading lots of books for it. I obviously did not get through nearly as many books as what on my TBR, but there we go. So in the month of May, I read 22 books. Six of those were books that I read for work. I work in publishing and the other 16 are books I can tell you about today, 15 of which were books for the 1900 to 1950 readathon. So I didn't get through my massive TBR of 27 books, of course, but I still read a lot of wonderful books in May and I also um, did manage to tick off all the challenges for the readathon, which I'm pleased about. Um, so yes, let's get straight into the books. The first thing I want to mention that I read in May was The Playboy of the Western World by J.M. Singe. This is an Irish play from 1907. And this one was a weird one and I still don't really know quite what to make of it. This is a play um, set in a rural Irish community um, around a pub and one night a um, young man comes into this pub um, and says that he has killed his father um, and he comes into this community um, kind of on the run from the police having done this um, and everyone applauds him for this great act of bravery um, and wants to be his friend and is really interested in him um, and we know from him that he wasn't very popular in his old life but now in his new life having killed his father everyone is kind of hero worshipping him in a weird way and everything goes on from there and the ending is quite weird. There were a lot of things that I slightly struggled with. In many ways I quite enjoyed the Playboy of the Western world. Um, I really enjoy the reading experience because I really enjoy reading plays um, and one thing I quite like about reading a play is that you can often read it in one sitting. You know, I read this in one evening in sort of two hours, which I really enjoyed. The dialogue is really engaging um, and it's well written and compelling, but I sort of don't believe the main premise and conceit and I found it quite hard to really believe that everyone would react to this character and what he's done in the way that they do, which I feel like is the kind of thing that if I saw it on stage and it was acted in a believable way, I could believe, but I feel like it's one of those plays that just reading it and not seeing it is not quite enough to like help you suspend your disbelief of the odd situation that's happening and the strange circumstances of the play. So I kind of enjoyed it, but I also didn't like fully uh, like go along with the story in the way that I might have done if I had seen it on stage. But there we go. The next book I want to mention is this. This is The Sad End of Policarpo Caresma by Lima Barreto, which is a Brazilian classic from 1911. This was a really interesting book and one that I really enjoyed in many ways, um, especially the beginning and the end. I liked the middle less. This is the story of a government clerk living in Brazil in the late 19th century, I think, possibly the early 20th century, but I think it's set in the 1890s. I think. He is a government clerk um, and he is incredibly patriotic to the extent that he kind of wants Brazil to get rid of all its European customs that it's adopted. Um, he wants to abolish the Portuguese language in Brazil and replace it with an old indigenous Brazilian language and he basically wants to change society in order to make it more Brazilian. It's about how people initially react to that. People judge him very harshly for his unusual behaviour and sort of think that he is going mad um, and then the kind of situation changes um, and people don't think he is going mad in the same way that they did earlier. I can't really explain more than that I think without spoiling it, um, but there's a sort of shift in the middle of the narrative um, and things become more complicated. There were some things that I really liked about this book um, and some things that I liked slightly less. Basically um, I really really enjoyed the beginning and I really really enjoyed the end and I didn't like the middle quite as much. The beginning is quite kind of domestic and personal I suppose, are very focused on individual characters and then the ending, especially like the very ending, um, is again a bit more focused on individual characters but the middle is a bit more political and we get a bit more like this is what's happening rather than um, internal psychology of the characters. So I really enjoyed it overall but there were definitely bits of it I liked more. I really enjoyed the exploration of sort of like the Brazilian culture and what does and doesn't count as Brazilian to this character and I also enjoyed the exploration of particular social issues in Brazil at this time. So yeah this was a really interesting read and definitely one I'd recommend. 
I also read this First World War Poems from the Front. This is a collection of poetry from the First World War and one that I really really enjoyed. I'd read some of these poems and other things by some of these poets before um, but there were also quite a lot of poems in this collection which were new to me which I really enjoyed. So this collection in it has the work of um, 15 different poets writing about the First World War, um, the majority of whom are soldiers but there are a few nurses and a um, military chaplain as well and the book is kind of ordered by poet um, and at the beginning of their section it has like a page of kind of biographical information about their life um, and the role they played in the First World War which I really enjoyed and I thought was great. I also really liked the variety in here, like I said there were poets in here which are very well known like Wilfred Owen and Sidgefried Sassoon but there were also some poets um, that I haven't read much by. Like any anthology there were some poems I liked more than others but I really enjoyed this and I'd highly recommend this edition. Next I want to mention this, um, this is Despised and Rejected by by Rose Alatini. This is a British novel from 1918 and this is my favourite book of the month and will be one of my favourite books of the year. This is one of the most interesting books I've ever read as well as being an incredibly brilliant book. So this is a um, novel about conscientious objection during the First World War and also about sexuality. So we're following two main characters Antoinette and Dennis um, and we're following them in the lead up to the First World War and then during the First World War. Dennis does not want to fight, he is a conscientious objector and we look at him and other people who do not want to fight in the First World War who are pacifists um, and meanwhile we're also looking at sexuality because Dennis is attracted to other men um, and Antoinette finds herself drawn to other women um, although she also thinks that she might be interested in Dennis but she's not really sure. And it's about their friendship and their relationship um, as well as their relationship with other characters around them and it's about feeling like an outsider in your society, being treated like an outsider in your society. It's about pacifism and individualism in a world that is obsessed with war and patriotism and nationalism. And it's about being attracted to people of the same sex as you in a world that does not think that is okay. And it's just fantastic. The fact that this book was written and published in 1918, when it looks at these incredibly controversial topics for the time in this amazingly powerful, open way, is just fantastic. Like I've read lots of other books from not this time, but a little bit before this time that basically do talk about sexuality but in a very like veiled way where you have to read between the lines a lot and you don't have to read between the lines in here at all like Dennis and Antoinette just have like open conversations about their sexuality in an amazing way and it's just so fascinating. Um, the afterword of this book talks about the history of it quite a lot. It was published um, and then banned quite soon after publication um, and the remaining copies were kind of pulped. Though interestingly it was put on trial not for the depiction of sexuality in this book but for the um, sympathy portrait of conscientious objectors because it was considered to be kind of anti-war and it was published during the First World War. This book has a fascinating history and is incredibly interesting in the themes that it tackles in the time that it was written um, but it's also just an incredibly wonderful story and I loved the writing and the dialogue and the characterization was just wonderful so absolutely loved this. What a book. Yeah. I highly highly recommend this, this was my highlight of the month. I buddy read this with Jen the librarian whose channel I'll link down below um, and I've really enjoyed discussing with her and yeah just such a good book. I'm so I'm so glad I read this, it was just just amazing. Another book I read this month was The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem. This is a British novel from 1922. I listened to this on audiobook and it was a really fun read. It is about these four different women who don't really know each other who end up um, through various circumstances going on holiday together to Italy for a month. None of them are very happy at home but in this wonderful house in Italy um, they start to kind of reassess their lives and become a little bit happier and they end up kind of learning to understand themselves and each other better as their friendships grow and, and everything changes and it's really 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 fun. It's just a really delightful read but I liked that it had a good balance of kind of fun and seriousness because it is quite fun and in places it is quite silly um, and it is very kind of like sweet and charming but also it does have moments where it really looks at kind of complicated themes like you know one of the reasons why a lot of these women are kind of unhappy is because of the particular kind of social pressures that are put on women at this point in time which I thought was explored really well um, and it was just a really really enjoyable read so I'd highly highly recommend it. Um, it was great fun, really enjoyable, very lovely and the audiobook was great as well. 
Next I want to mention The Beautiful and the Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is an American novel from 1922 and I buddy read this with Marissa from Blatantly Bookish and Heather from Fresh Parchment. I did not like this book very much um, and neither did the other two. So I've read a little bit of F. Scott Fitzgerald before. I've read The Great Gatsby which I read years ago and really enjoyed and I've also read quite a lot of his short stories and I've really enjoyed all the short stories of his that I have read um, but this, this I did not get on with very well. There are a few reasons. Um, this is a book which basically follows this couple Anthony and Gloria um, and their complicated tempestuous relationship between kind of the early 1910s to um, the late 1910s, early 1920s. Um, they are both upper class. Anthony's grandfather made a lot of money um, and Anthony is kind of just like doing nothing, not working, waiting for his inheritance when he meets Gloria and falls in love with her. And we follow their relationship and they're kind of increasing the struggles of money because neither of them are working, but they also kind of want to live up to the upper class life and have a lot of parties um, and kind of be in a particular social set that they can't really afford to be in. And it's about their relationship. And I think in some ways it is supposed to be a criticism of this particular set in society and the kind of like lack of purpose in their lives. I think that is what it is trying to explore but it doesn't quite work for me. And I think the issue I really have with this is that none of the characters are likeable which is fine i don't mind a book about unlikable characters but they're also really boring and i feel like i don't mind unlikable characters if they're interesting but anthony is just not interesting at all as a character and gloria is like occasionally interesting but not very often interesting and i just i just didn't really get on with it very much or get much out of it i also feel perhaps even more importantly than that that this book is just a mess like the structure and the story and the pacing and like where the focus of it is is just nowhere like it doesn't really have a, a proper structure and then i thought the ending was going to be really interesting but then it wasn't there were a few like scenes and moments which were really well thought out well, I kind of like got a glimpse of the F. Scott Fitzgerald that I have seen and liked in The Great Gatsby, but a lot of the rest of it was just a bit, a bit messy. And maybe that was the point because that their lives are lacking in purpose, so the book is lacking in purpose. I don't know, but I didn't, I didn't really get on with it. I also, there were a few things which made for uncomfortable reading as a modern reader, and um, the way Anthony talks about and looks at women um, and the way even Gloria like talks about herself as a woman were was not great and at one point they employ a Japanese servant and um, the way that F. Scott Fitzgerald writes that character and also the way that other characters in the book treat that character um, is not great so yes I did not really enjoy this one if you're going to read something by F. Scott Fitzgerald you should read The Great Gatsby not this Another book I read this month was Whose Body by Dorothy L. Sayers. This is a British crime classic from 1923. And this is the first book in the Lord Peter Whimsey series, which follows um, Lord Peter Whimsey, who is an aristocrat who is solving crimes. I really, really enjoyed this. It was very delightful and great fun. I am very excited to read more in this series in the future. I feel like I loved um, the setup and the characters more than necessarily like the plot itself. The plot was good, but I can imagine that there will be future Lord Peter Whimsy books that I would like even more um, because I just loved the characterization. The murder mystery itself is really great as well. We're following what happens when um, a body um, unknown and not wearing anything turns up in one man's bathtub in his flat and he doesn't know why, he doesn't know what's happened so he calls the police and also through um, Lord Peter Whimsy's mother um, calls in Lord Peter Whimsy to come and help as well. The thing that I really enjoyed about this book is Lord Peter Whimsy as a character. He's a really wonderfully drawn character but also he's just a delight to read because his dialogue is so fun. One of the things I really enjoy about Who's Body is that it feels to me like a cross between Agatha Christie and Peter Woodhouse. Like imagine if Bertie Wooster was like really intelligent and solving crimes. That's that's the best way to explain Lord Peter Whimsy, even though they're really different characters. He talks with the same kind of like upper class 1920s slang as Bertie Wooster does and also he has a manservant um, and his manservant um, is really interested in like photography and crime photography so he like comes to crime scenes and like takes photographs of fingerprints and develops them in his dark room and so they like help each other solve crimes as a team. It's just excellent fun, um, very very enjoyable and yeah can't wait to read more in this series in the future. Next I have Quicksand by Nella Larson. This is another book that I absolutely loved and that I really 
really enjoyed. This is the second thing I've read by Nella Larson. I read Passing last year and loved it and this year I read Quicksand and it was also amazing. This is an American classic from 1928 and we're following a young woman called Helga. At the beginning of the book Helga is teaching at a school but she is increasingly disillusioned with her life there and so she decides to leave um, and try and get a job elsewhere and we're basically following her through her life as a young woman um, trying to find a place for herself in society and it's basically looking at her experiences um, as a mixed race woman at this point in time and her kind of struggles with depression and loneliness I suppose and it's amazing. There's something about the way Nella Larson writes that is just incredible. I think she has like a really really precise writing style which is just the kind of precise writing style that I love. It's just fantastic and I cannot recommend her work enough. I don't think I love Quicksand quite as much as Passing because Passing was just so incredible and the ending of Passing is just like I don't know how any ending of any book would really beat that. Um, but Quicksand was very amazing too and just yeah, just fantastic. I, I wish she had written more. I wish I had like 50 novels by Nella Larson to discover, but I don't. These are the only two novels that she wrote. I do think she has some other short stories, so I'm sure I will try and get my hands on them in the future. But yeah, this is just a really, really wonderful read. Next, I read another book also called Quicksand, this time by Junichiro Tanzaki. This is a Japanese classic from 1928 to 1930. And this is a very strange novel, um, which tells the story of um, a young woman Woman. she's in her early 20s she's married and what happens when she meets another young woman who she is incredibly attracted to and they sort of begin a relationship but it is very very complicated and very messy where there's sort of a love triangle and sort of a love square and everything is very very messy and everyone is constantly lying to each other the amount of lying that takes place in this book is just immense I really liked this it was very weird like some of it especially some of the lying and the kind of like stories that people tell each other feels very far-fetched um, but because Tamazaki writes wonderfully I just kind of like suspended my belief and went with all the strangeness in this book. It's a very odd novel but I really liked it I really enjoyed the reading experience of it. It's not my favourite Tamazaki I would say um, the Makioka sisters and some prefer nettles would, would beat it for me um, but I did really enjoy it and it was a really interesting read. The next book I have to talk about is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. This is a British novel from 1932 and this is a classic dystopian work so it is set in some point in the future in a world that sort of thinks itself a utopia thinks it has solved every problem um, where kind of everyone is very heavily um, genetically modified and basically they sort of genetically modified people into classes it is a society which has done away with family which has done away with marriage which has done away with um, committed relationships and monogamy um, and which has done away with um, kind of biological birth so all people are kind of created in labs um, brought up in kind of big schools which condition them to think a particular way. Everyone spends a lot of time on drugs. Everyone is happy, sort of, but no one really has any individuality. And we're following various characters, um, one of whom is a man who doesn't really feel like he belongs in the society, um, one of whom is a woman who does feel more at home in the society, and they end up meeting another man who has grown up in a kind of different bit of the world where he has not grown up in the same world as them um, and when they meet him everything kind of goes on from there. There were some things that I really liked about this book and some things that I liked less. Basically I think the premise is incredible and the world building is fantastic and felt believable and kind of like thought-provoking and compelling and sort of horrible but also like understandable like I found it really interesting comparing it to 1984 I think it's really hard not to compare it to 1984 that was definitely what I had in my head while reading it because I think in some ways like the society is sort of less evil than in 1984 like the people in charge seem less evil but that almost makes it worse because the world is like so horrible and dystopian in so many ways but also like people don't know like no one realizes which I kind of guess is sort of a case in 1984 but I don't know there's there's not like a resistance movement like there is in 1984 it's just a few individuals being like is this really right is this really how I want to do society the world building is incredible and the premise is fantastic the plot is less good especially in comparison to 1984 I think the premise of Brave New World is better but the plot is so much better in 1984 um, and I feel like the pacing and the plot and like who the focus is on 
is a little bit messy in Brave New World. Um, so I feel like the plot isn't quite perfect in Brave New World. Um, and I also did find that the kind of presentation of women in it was like, I found that quite frustrating. Um, all the people who think there might be anything wrong with the world are men. And then like all the women are just really enjoying all the drugs and like are kind of presented as a bit stupid, um, which I didn't really like. So it had such an amazing premise and I kind of loved it, but also I slightly struggled with it. Another thing I read this month was um, some short stories about Arsene Le Pen, um, The Gentleman Thief by Maurice Leblanc. Um, these are French short stories um, from the early 20th century. Arsene Le Pen as a character is a, a thief, but he is a gentleman. He's the kind of character who will like steal someone's jewels, but leave behind in the jewel chest the ones that were fakes because they're not good enough for him. Like that's the kind of character Arsene Le Pen is. And he's obviously very kind of intelligent, um, but also kind of like debonair and charming. And it's very good fun. The stories were a bit hit and miss for me. Um, some of them were really engaging and really hilarious and great fun, especially those that focused on Arsene Le Pen where we followed him a lot. Um, but some of the other stories were a little bit like dry and a bit long-winded slash tangential um, to me. So a bit of a mix, but pretty good fun and a character I'm sure I'll enjoy revisiting in future. Then this month I also read Put Out More Flags by Evelyn Waugh. This is a British novel from 1942. This is set during the Second World War and it's about a group of kind of London elite people um, and what happens to them when war breaks out. We're mostly following a man called Basil. I have very mixed feelings about this like I do about all Evelyn War. Um, I'll link my video about Evelyn War that I did this month down below. But basically I didn't really enjoy the main character Basil. He wasn't very funny and he wasn't very engaging and whenever it was about him I wasn't very interested but I liked all the minor characters a lot more especially the character of Ambrose who was really interesting and who I would have happily read a whole book about. So. I sort of liked some of this a lot and liked bits of it a lot less um, and it was a bit of a mix as it always is for me with Even War. Another book I read this month was A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. This I was participating in a read-along for um, run by Marissa from Blakeney Bookish and Kate Howe. This is an American novel from 1943 but it's set in the 1910s in Brooklyn um, following the kind of upbringing and the sort of coming of age story of a young girl called Francie from when she's sort of I think nine or ten till when she's sort of 16 or 17 um, and Francie is living in extreme poverty with her mother, father and brother and we look at kind of how they get by and um, how they live um, and what happens as she grows up. There was a lot that I loved about this book. Basically I really really enjoyed the second half and I don't know if that's just that the second half was much stronger or it just took me a long time to get into. I sort of was reading it quite slowly and then once I got into it I sped up my reading so it might just be that I enjoyed it a lot more once I sped up my reading. It's quite a long book. I'm not sure it needed to be this long. It did feel a little bit um, tangential in places but I really really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed the exploration of kind of being someone living in poverty at this time um, and the kind of social and economic things explored in this book were fantastic. And then I also read Animal Farm by George Orwell. This is a British novel from 1945 and this is a sort of parable, fable, um, based off the Russian Revolution. It's set on a farm but it's kind of retelling the story of the Russian Revolution through um, animals overthrowing their human overlords on the farm. And it's kind of about how like even when there are big social changes kind of in the name of the people. There are always kind of elites that are going to like exploit the people or the animals in this case. This was really a weird and interesting read because like Animal Farm is so much in popular culture and I've like seen a play adaptation of it before. So it didn't feel like I was reading this for the first time, even though I was, because it felt like very familiar to me. And also I studied Russian history quite a lot at school, so I kind of knew all the like historical background. So it didn't really feel like a new or thought provoking read because I felt like I kind of knew what I was expecting. But I'm so glad that I finally read it because it has been on my TBR for a very long time. Then I also read Crooked House by Agatha Christie, which is a British crime novel from 1949. This was a really enjoyable read. Um, it was a great one and just thoroughly engaging. I really like Agatha Christie a lot and this was no exception. This is a standalone novel um, and it it's about um, what happens when the kind of patriarch of a family gets murdered um, and everyone is wondering who in the family possibly could have done it. 
um, and our narrator um, is in love with and sort of on the point of becoming engaged with the granddaughter of this man and it's about their relationship and him trying to work out what actually happened. His father happens to be in the police and um, so he kind of gets involved from both sides trying to figure out what happened and everything goes on from there. It's a really really enjoyable read and um, just really engaging and great. I didn't find the ending quite so surprising as I think it was meant to be um, but I still thought it was a really enjoyable read and I just love Agatha Christie so that was great. Finally I read one book this month which was not for the 1900 to 1950 readathon and that was A Bear Called Paddington by Michael Bond and um, this was sort of a reread for me. I had read um, the first half of this before in a separate collection um, that just had those stories on its own um, but this is kind of like the full original first book of Paddington and um, with all the original stories about Paddington Bear um, and his adventures with the Browns and all the like um scrapes he gets himself into. It's a children's classic from the 1950s and it's just great fun and entirely delightful. Nothing quite so charming as a story about Paddington Bear. So that's it for now. Those are all the books that I read in the month of May. Please let me know how your 1900 to 1950 readathon went. What did you read this month? What did you enjoy the most? And that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Mm -hmm.